Here is the 2024 Mercedes AMG GT 53 in silver over red and black. This is kind of the sweet spot because you're not 43, but you're not quite 63. So pricing, you're going to be over hundred grand. But when you're thinking about BMW and Audi, who's going to be the best performer? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm going to touch bases on the pros and cons and the problem that I have with the AMG GT. We're going to start off in the front fascia full LED headlights and daytime runnings. The front has been reworked for 24. So the grill is going to be a little bit more in your face with the vertical bars, which I like this because when you're getting a 53, now it's going to look similar to the 63. Because we have the AMG night package, which gives the black front splitter, the mirror caps, the fender trim elements, and the window trim gets the black chrome as well as the tailpipe trim. The extended night package adds the exterior elements and the lettering in black. But when you're thinking about BMW and Audi, the question comes into play. If you go into an 840i Grand Coupe, it's going to be less performance than this. But the 0 to 60 is still somewhat close. If you go up to the M850i, that's kind of the sweet spot because it's more or less an M engine. I mean, 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. But then it outclasses this. That would be more so towards the 63 because this year we also get a performance variant in this that has over 800 horsepower. The example we're showcasing today has the 3.0 liter inline six cylinder that's producing 429 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque. That's paired to an AMG Speed Shift TCT nine-speed auto automatic transmission reaching 60 Mercedes is quoting at 4.4 seconds and achieving 19 mpgs for the city 24 mpgs for the highway now when you're comparing this against Audi going against the S7 it's going to be similar in performance but going into the RS7 is going to be a different class as well because now you're over 120 grand so that's why this is a sweet spot and keeping a grand coupe we have 21 inch forged AMG wheels the AMG brakes talking six pistons up front and when you go to the AMG GT we have the standard adaptive four-wheel multi-link AMG ride control with sports suspension, which means the vehicle is going to drive aggressive and you're not going to get that same performance out of an 840i because you're only going to have it 335 horsepower. And when you go into the Audi, the RS7 Sportback, that's actually my favorite variant in the Grand Coupe style or these coupe style vehicles with four doors. But you're talking over 120 grand. And this year, which I have a review on as well, you're talking over $150,000. It just doesn't make sense to tick the box on those variants when you're getting such performance here. Electronic deployable wing, LED rear tail lights, and the quad exhaust tips with the AMG badging, front and rear parking sensors with a 360 degree reverse camera. And another nice thing about these coupe styles, they are hatchbacks. So it's going to emphasize a little bit more cargo capacity. The problem that I have though, is that when you go 53, I mean, we have four trims this year. It would be better that we knock off the 43, make this the base variant, go to the 63, keep the performance, but that way this starts at the base level and it beats everybody in its class. Power lift gate going into 12.7 cubic feet of storage. You get bottle holders, bag holders on both sides with a 12 volt. And here you'll get another little storage net and storage underneath the floor and this folds out. So that way you can put anything here. It's enough space for this hatchback design, but we need to go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. Napa leather wrap, sport contoured seats, power seat adjustment for the driver and passenger, heated, ventilated massage, memory for the driver and passenger. Headroom and leg room. This is a sports car, so it's going to be a lot more sporty, driver focused setup, but you can still see that to adults, that's around six foot. I know he's not quite an adult yet, but he's getting there, getting his license soon, can sit in the front. Leather wrap 
dashboard with the contrast stitching and the carbon fiber. It goes all the way into the door pocket, circular air vents on the whole vehicle, which makes it a lot more sporty. And you're gonna obviously get a touch screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio with the track pack, which is great because, I mean, you might wanna take this on the track. You can now put everything in your system here. And the AMG performance here will just show you everything about the vehicle in which you have these little capsules that has the driver mode right here. You can change into it and they have a lot of driving modes, but you can make it really sport derived. So S plus or just regular sport comfort. You can also tailor it the way you like for any configuration. Throwing it into reverse, we've got a reverse camera, full trajectory for the front and the rear. I do like how they put these little boxes here because you know, when you're in a sports car, you wanna be able to see everything around you and you can see my gear right there. You can also change different camera positions and you can zoom into those positions. Going into the carbon fiber that opens up in two, two USB ports, a 12 volt and the key fob for the AMG GT53. Cigarette ashtray, or you can just utilize the two cup holders. You have a touchpad right here that will go for the inbox infotainment screen. And you have a palm holder here. Click on these, you can make it manual for the transmission shifts. You can make the suspension more sporty and you can also raise and lower the wing in the back. So that way it looks really cool whenever you're just driving around a little bit slower. Open up inside and you get a wireless charging pad with a USB port. And even though it's sporty, it's still soft to touch. Leather wrap steering wheel with Alcantara on the side. This is the sport steering wheel and the way I would do it because you have your driver mode select right here. And you can also do the same thing for the AMG dynamic performance. And you can change everything right on the steering wheel. These are touch sensitive for that gauge cluster. This side here is for the gauge cluster. This side here is for the infotainment screen. You can scroll through here and you have a lot of different settings and a lot of different pages. You can also put the navigation in which you can have that on both screens so it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to look into the center or you can just simply go into a more understated, I would put it into the sport. That way it looks a lot more dynamic. Going to the door panels, it's gonna be soft to touch where it needs to be. One touch up and down for all the windows. A medium sized storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out. Auto dimming rear view mirror that's edgeless and two moon roofs with edgeless windows. For the back seats, headroom is actually good even though this is a coupe slash hatchback. Same thing with leg space. And we're not gonna have any storage, but we will have some air vents. Open this up and you get a 12 volt and USB port, a little cigarette ashtray, cup holders here that can be removed. And then you have a storage container, which you could do the same thing in the front with a wireless charging pad and two more USB ports. And I like how they contour to your body. So these are sports seats, even into the back. The door is gonna have the same materials and the edgeless windows, carbon fiber, Burmaster sound system, soft to touch, just a smaller storage pocket. 429 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque, reaching 60, 4.4 seconds. So it is fast. And we're going to put it into Sport Plus. That way we can see the dynamics of this vehicle unleashed. We're not gonna do it right here. A lot of cops out today. You can hear the exhaust filter in. The ride is going to be very firm, but it is to be expected. This is full AMG spec. And when you go 53, like I was saying on the exterior, it's a sweet spot because there isn't a lot of vehicles that go in class against this with the performance that you're getting because it literally will put you into another, into another level of vehicle, which you may not want that much power. That's why this is nice and check it out. That was just a touch. Not gonna go too crazy yet. Uh, I like the exhaust note that filters in. The seat bolstering, especially when you get these upgraded sports seats, I would recommend it. The spec that it is is good because you're getting quite a bit of value too. It does put the sticker price more into the 120s to near 130s in which 
it's going to start taking me into some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, you already know about the sweet spot, you know it's quick enough, and it does what it needs to do. Interior tech is laid out nicely. I like how the infotainment and gauge cluster is in the dash, it doesn't really come out. They did a good job making it more compact and closed up. It just feels very sporty. The exhaust filters in good. The sound deadening is still quiet. Plenty of room, but then it lacks in storage. But then again, this is a sports car, so you're not really looking for a lot of storage nooks throughout the vehicle. But if you're looking for that drive and the cracks to pop, you're getting it. It's not a V8, but that six sounds amazing. The steering, it's pretty loose. So I like that you can maneuver in and out. It feels wide, but it doesn't feel long. The braking to the vehicle is tight. So I like that too, because sometimes when you get these sports cars, the brakes are not there. When you're comparing this against Audi, I feel like this is a little bit more of a seamless drive than the S7, but when you go into the RS7, it's a different animal. Same thing with BMW, when you go into the base 840i, it feels like there's a bit of lag. It does liven up, but this is gonna be a little bit more potent. Now going into the 43, you're gonna feel a little bit more of that lag, but when you're thinking about a six cylinder that has this much power, that's crazy. Some other pros is in the back seat. It's a two plus two sports car, which I like this because you actually will have room for the back seat occupants. BMW does a good job in the sense of giving you the fifth seat in the back and the same thing with Audi. But if you go up to the Alpina, then you're getting a little bit more luxury and then you're losing performance. But like any performance vehicle, let's go. The pops just made it a lot more exciting. Getting up onto the interstate. What the heck, let's rock and roll. Oh man, she is quick. But that is going, there's gonna have some sacrifice in the ride, but I mean, for me, I am a sports car fan because I personally own a sports car in which I don't mind the rigid drive because the seat cushion, especially when you go into this AMG with these sports seats, they are comfortable, even in the back seat. And I like that you can fit somebody, my dimensions, throughout the vehicle. Not a huge fan of the Alcantara on the steering wheel only because it doesn't age as well as a full Napa leather wrap steering wheel, but I really do like this setup because this is the AMG sports steering wheel. So everything is on the steering wheel in which you can change the driving modes on the fly and you can turn that auto start stop off, which is so annoying. And you can also do this. but it's not as pleasant unless you're in sport plus mode. Any other mode, I feel like you are starting to lose some of that performance feel and you will start feeling a little bit more of the lag opposed to putting it into sport, livens up and you're not gonna feel any lag at all. So depending on the way you like to drive, I personally would drive this in sport to sport plus the majority of the time because you're not really too concerned about mpgs when you're going this variant is this better than bmw and audi the slot that it fits in yes but once you start featuring it up the problem lies that it pushes you in to an m850i to a near m8 competition grand coupe or this will push you up to an rs7 sportback and that's a different animal but let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Mercedes-Benz of Clearwater for giving us this 2024 Mercedes-AMG GT53 for our car review.